Vikes now, I am Dustin Baker. We're here for the April 10th edition, about two and a half weeks before the NFL draft. The Vikings have the 23rd overall pick, although this guy expects them to trade out of that backward maybe once or twice to stockpile more picks in the top 100 rather than just one home run attempt at 23. If they stay at 23, I will not be mad, however. I digress right out of the gate. We're here to talk about the wide receiver two spot on the depth chart and how my prognosis and probably your thoughts on WR2 since the end of the 2022 season until now with the draft right around the bend has really changed. It's not what it once was, and there's a couple reasons for it. Foremost, the Vikings had an opportunity to sign, what, maybe five different guys in free agency to fill the WR2 shoes that were left empty by Adam Thielen leaving for the Carolina Panthers. It could have been Alan Lazard, although I didn't really want him. Jacoby Myers, who was kind of a meh. DJ Chark was fascinating, however, because he's big and fast. He went to... Let's see, the Panthers with Thielen for $5 million. bucks. Um, so there were plenty of reasonable and affordable, in hindsight, options at WR2 for these Vikings. But nothing happened. The only wide receiver they signed was Brandon Powell, who I think we believe is going to challenge Jalen Rager for punt returning duties and fringe WR5 participation. But there has been no WR2 signing in free agency, and heading into the draft, I expected them to find a DJ Chark type so that when you get to the draft, it can all be gravy. We've got the roster all taken care of. Now we'll just go draft the best damn player available. Well, the Vikings didn't do that, so we'll get to this in a little bit. They either have KJ Osborne on the brain as WR2, or something else is afoot, and we shall discuss that as well. So this, the I, the idea for this episode came about yesterday on Easter Sunday because, wouldn't you know it, the Odell Beckham sweepstakes are kaput. They're over. He's joining the other purple team. He is getting $15 million guaranteed dollars, a contract that's expandable up to $18 million with incentives. And for about what? Probably starting last August, when some of us realized the Vikings were going to be pretty good and not just some eight-win team, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of when the OBJ mentions started in the Viking circles because, for one reason, Kevin O'Connell was co-workers with Beckham in Los Angeles. The two won a Super Bowl together, what, 14 months ago. So when you employ the former coach of the guy who won a Super Bowl in Los Angeles, those player and coach ties usually matter in sports. So there was always a reasonable chance that Odo Beckham would sign on and be Justin Jefferson's running mate. Those two went to the same school, LSU. Alas, it did not happen. And I'm not giving the OBJ speech just because, because the reason I'm doing it is he was the last viable option as a WR2 on the open free agent market. Now you can make fringe candidates like Julio Jones, um, you know, Byron Pringle. I mean, those type of guys. But if you're going to sign Julio Jones at age blah, 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 whatever he is, 34 or something. You might as well put him at WR3 or WR4. In my opinion, and I think in your opinion, there are no more WR2s available on the open market. That really intensifies the situation with what are the Vikings going to do at WR2. There is no free agent coming through that door anymore. They had that. They missed that opportunity if they were pursuing it in the first place. So with no DJ Chark type, no Odell Beckham type, you will naturally say, oh, I know what, Dustin, they're just going to they're going to draft a wide receiver with their first pick. They could, and maybe they will. But it, this draft class is starting to get the reputation of one not necessarily laden with first round wide receiver talent. I think because this position, wide receiver has become so vital in a pass happy NFL, we just assume that, oh, yeah, there's going to be five wide receivers like the 2020 draft with Jefferson and Judy and Lamb. But not every draft is like that. And because mock drafters have, you know, plopped Jackson Smith and Jigba, Jordan Addison, Zay Flowers, and Quentin Johnson all in the first round for about three months, we've kind of assumed, oh, the Vikings will get one of those in the first round and we'll be hunky-dory. But NFL scout Jim Nagy tweeted this morning, one thing that has become clear on all the calls around the leagues in the past couple weeks, the NFL isn't nearly as high on this year's WR draft class as the media. 
He continued, frequently seeing four or five wideouts in these mocks. Have spoken to numerous teams that have only one first round grade at that position, and that is Jackson Smith and Jiba. So, if you believe Nagy, who I think is credible, it's not necessarily a wise assumption to think, oh, yeah, Zay Flowers, for sure, he's a first rounder. Some of these guys outside of Smith and Jiba are probably going to fa- fall to round two. And I don't know if you consider that good or bad news for the Vikings, but it really makes the WR2 situation a little wonky because for the longest time, we just kind of assumed, oh, yeah, draft Jordan Addison and you'll be all good. That'll be your WR2. Well, maybe he will mature into that. But if JSN is the only guy that can really step in week one and be Jefferson's running mate, then what? The draft can't be classified as a guaranteed solution for a WR2 problem. And it may not even be a problem in the first place. The other option that is kind of twisting in the wind that could crystallize during the draft is perhaps the Vikings will trade for a WR2. Cortland Sutton is a fascinating name. He hasn't had a productive season since, what, 2019 Drew Locke's first go at it in Denver. Uh, But he's another big wide receiver that, when healthy, is pretty damn productive. And inside a Kirk Cousins-led offense with games where Justin Jefferson will be neutralized because of the utmost attention, Sutton could theoretically feast on the Vikings. Now, I have no intel inside sourcing that says he's you're even talking to the Broncos about trading for him, but he's one that's been out there, and I, I don't include Jerry Judy in this conversation because he's going to want a gigantic contract, and the Vikings are already worried about another gigantic contract getting done, and that's Justin Jefferson's. T. Higgins has been floated out there in the trade rumor mill, but I don't think the Bengals will let go of him. And he's another guy you're going to have to turn around and pay $20 million per year. I don't know if the Vikings have the budget for it. We shall see. But a trade of some sorts, because we know free agency is now not going to happen. It's not going to get what you want for WR2. A trade could be something that the Vikings ultimately do to satisfy their WR2 need. But... All of these tidbits of evidence, whether it is not signing a DJ Chark in free agency, the last best option, Odell Beckham, he's going to play for the Ravens. We're being told about the draft that not these four or five guys that were once or even today in first round mock drafts, they might not be that good. This is starting to hint at K.J. Osborne as the guy. That could probably be an alternate uh, title to this episode of Vikes Now is that it's really coming down to K.J. Osborne or bust. There is no guarantee whatsoever that with the Nagy tweet that JSN falls to the Vikings at 23, some folks think he's going to go to number 12 to the Houston Texans. So this thinking or long-standing assumption, oh, if they don't sign a WR2 in free agency or they don't trust Osborne, they'll just draft a guy, and then whoever that is, Zay Flowers, will be the WR2 for the Vikings. That's becoming less and less likely by the day. It's kind of like the, kind of like cornerbacks. I don't understand why they haven't signed one by now, so they're probably going to draft one. But with wide receivers, I don't know if the first guy that the Vikings draft will be ready in September, which would mean that they have a lot of eggs in the basket. Yes, a a late Easter mention of K.J. Osborne. He was a WR3 and came out of nowhere in 2021 and then 2022. So I think we should start to adjust our thinking that K.J. Osborne is on a pathway to be the Vikings' second wide receiver. He who he tweeted about two weeks ago. He's keeping tabs on all these naysayers, probably folks like me that don't quite know if Osborne's up to the task for the WR2. Uh, the, the weird thing about Osborne is that usually when you have a WR2, especially one that's going to complement somebody as good as Justin Jefferson, a WR2 does one thing really well, like either a route runner or a speed guy or a take the top off the defense deep threat. And Osborne doesn't have a claim to fame to any of those. The thing that he does well is his clutch gene. When the Vikings need a walk-off or go-ahead touchdown, Osborne usually comes up with it. So kudos to him. That's a tremendous thing. But in terms of all of the schematics of what a wide receiver does, Osborne is kind of in the middle of all of those traits. That's why I question whether or not he'll be the WR2. But the... The gist of this episode, the takeaway, is that 
each day, each transaction that goes, that transpires, that doesn't involve the Vikings, tends to point at Osborne as the WR2. And this kind of correlates to the theory that I had last week about the draft that I think we're seeing a, a bit of a 49ersization of the Vikings offense. They signed a blocking tight end, an expensive one, and Josh Oliver. They re-signed C.J. Ham, who was hardly used on offense. So A, we want to know that the Vikings or we're getting to know that the Vikings are going to run the ball more unless it's all just be- best laid plans. And then if they don't go draft JSN and Osborne's the WR2, it seems like they, they want to be kind of more like the 49ers. And the, the comp would be George Kittle to TJ Hawkinson. And then you've got your Justin Jefferson to Debo Samuel. And the only thing that's missing is a, a show-stopping running back. Now, of course, Dalvin Cook could return. I don't see that happening. Or I've even floated they could draft Bijan Robinson if he's there at 23. And then the 49ers plan really would be in effect. But all of this, I thought there would have been a WR2 solution not named Osborne right now. So I'm starting to think that I was wrong and I've been telling you guys the wrong thing. And that as we get closer to the draft, if it's not JSN, uh, that Osborne week one could be your WR2 for the Minnesota Vikings. So I think the plot has thickened there that if we would have done this show seven weeks ago, I'd say, oh, yeah, they're going to end up with DJ Chark, free agency, somebody like that, or they're going to draft Jordan Addison because he can be game ready as a WR2. But I don't know that either of those are true as of April 10th. So start adjusting your mindset that Osborne could be the guy next to Jefferson. And then if we're all wrong and they draft JSN or, or they pick Jalen Hyatt because they think he's the, the WR2 for September, great. But it seems like it's Osborne right now if you were going to bet on it. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. Skull, baby.